Welcome back everybody, this is Mr. Wakefield and we're going to look at uh, section 6.3 right now. Complex fractions is our topic and uh, that's exactly what they are, complex. Uh, but uh, that doesn't mean that every single complicated fraction is a complex fraction. It does have a specific definition. It says that it's a fraction with at least one rational expression. In other words, at least one fraction in the top or the bottom of the fraction. That basically means this. See how here we got one big fraction right here with one big fraction bar? And then inside of that one big fraction for the whole problem here with the big fraction bar is we have four little fractions. So we have fractions inside of one big fraction. All right, That's basically what a complex fraction is. Uh, when you got one big fraction with little fractions inside of it. Same thing here, we got one big fraction with a fraction bar, and then we have two little fractions inside of it, both on the top. Down here, we just got a number, no fraction. Uh, down here again, we have four fractions, uh, four little fractions stuck inside of one big one. So the question is, they want us to simplify that. All right, now simplify, if we don't define it exactly like we've seen in the past, all right, that can be a very vague word and uh, it can lead to a lot of confusion. So I need to make it clear to you guys exactly what's expected here when you simplify a complex fraction or a complex rational expression, same thing as a complex fraction. Uh, this is the most popular method. Contact me if for some reason you want to use this one instead because that is a little bit different. I want to make sure you know what you're doing. But uh, the uh, this one here is the more popular one that I've noticed over the years from watching students. Uh, uh, and... Uh, I'm going to do that one, okay? So, but again, contact me if you really want to use the other one. The first method, though, what's cool about that is that it incorporates everything uh, or a great deal of what we've learned in the previous couple of sections, 6.1 and 6.2. Uh, and so it gives us a chance to practice that uh, once again. So basically what it says is it says write both the numerator and denominator as a single fraction. That's the first step. Got to do that first. Uh, when you have two fractions being added together, and it could be true also for subtraction, the way that you make it into a single fraction is actually to go through the process of adding them together. So let me write that down over here, off to the side, because we're going to need some room for uh, the additional steps here. Um, but as you guys know, as I, as I go through this, as you guys know, uh, you cannot add fractions together unless you have a LCD, a common denominator. Uh, and so we are going to uh, uh, get a common denominator here. What is the LCD in this situation? Well, remember, and we're going to see this a lot in this section, our denominators are just a single term. And when each one of your denominators is just a single term, you do the same thing we did over here at the beginning of section 6.2 where uh, you do the coefficients first. But if both of the coefficients are equal to 1, which you can see that they are because there's nothing in front of the x there, then you don't need to do that part. Again, that's if both of the coefficients, if all of the coefficients are equal to 1. You can skip that step. But then what do you do for the variable part? You take the largest exponent, don't you? Okay, x squared and x to the first, we did x squared. It's the same thing here, you guys. Uh, we got x and x squared, so we're going to have x squared in the LCD. All right. Uh, now, you got to do that for each different letter, though. So we got to do it for y also. Uh, so for y and y squared, you've got y to the second. All right. And that's why uh, we get that LCD. So now that that is the LCD, what do we have to multiply by in order to get uh, the LCD uh, inside of each denominator? Well, what do you multiply xy squared by in order to get x squared y squared? You got to multiply by x, don't you? Okay, because x times x, 1 plus 1 on the exponents would give you x squared. And then the y squared, don't put another y there because it's got to stay the same. y squared has to stay as y squared. So don't multiply by another y. That would change it. Um, so we multiply by x. Because we multiply the bottom by x, we got to multiply the top by x as well. And that leads to what here? That leads to 3 times x is 3x. 
Let's do the same thing on the bottom. X squared Y times what is X squared Y squared? All right. Uh, X squared and X squared are the same, so don't, don't change that. Don't put another X there. Uh, y to the first times what is Y to the second? Well, that would be another Y to the first, wouldn't it? Okay, so Y times Y is Y squared. Therefore, I need to multiply the top by the same thing here, just Y. 2 times Y is 2Y. All right, now. Now, because the denominators are the same, I am ready to add those numerators together. Okay, remember, adding numerators together means to combine like terms. So if these aren't like terms, you, you should still say that they're being added together, but do not combine them, all right? As we've seen before, if you're adding or subtracting uh, terms that are not like terms, do not combine them. But you do need to, for the sake of making this into a single fraction like the directions ask us to, you're going to need to uh, at least say that they're being added together so you could put it into a single fraction here. But just don't combine them. Keep them separate, okay? Just say that they're being added together, all right? Um, and so that's the uh, numerator of the complex fraction. We still need to take the bottom of the complex fraction down here and do exactly the same thing with that. we got to make that into a single fraction. Let me transfer that over here so we can look at that. So we got 1 over x squared y and 2 over xy to the third. We have to add those together also. Uh, and so what's that going to be? Um, well, just like in the previous part over here, you got to take the largest exponent of each different variable. So for x squared and x, it's going to be x squared. For y and y to the third, it's going to be y to the third, the largest exponent of each one. All right. Now, um, So that's the LCD. Um, what do we got to multiply this one by in order to get that right there? What do we got to multiply that by? X squared and X squared are the same, so don't mess with that. Don't multiply by another X. But Y times Y squared is equal to Y to the third, isn't it? So similarly up here, uh, we got to multiply by y squared up there as well. Top and bottom have to get multiplied by the same thing, y squared and y squared. And then what? Then y to the third and y to the third are the same. So x times what is x to the second? x. Okay. And so we got to multiply the top by uh, x as well. 2 times x is 2x. And so we got a very similar situation as this fraction over here where now that our denominators are the same, we can add the numerators together, which means to combine like terms. But because these terms are not like terms, all right, um, don't combine them, but just say that they're being added together so that you can make a single fraction out of all this stuff. Okay, and so we did it. We made both the top and the bottom of the big complex fraction over here. We made that into, in fact, let me write it down below that so I have enough room. But uh, we made uh, both the top and the bottom into a single fraction. Let me write that down. 3x over 2y, or sorry, 3x plus 2y over x squared y squared. The big fraction bar is still in the same place right there. Okay, bring that down. And then the bottom underneath the big fraction bar is this right here. I'm just taking what I just figured out on the right side of the page and I'm just moving it over. Okay. Once you do that, and you cannot do this before that, you guys. You have to have a single fraction on both the top and the bottom of the big fraction bar before you can do this. But as you guys have seen uh, in the past... Um, when you have a fraction divided by a fraction, you can what? You can, and you, in this case you should, um, take the first fraction and keep it the same. But then when you're dividing by a fraction, you flip that second fraction over, and it simultaneously becomes a multiplication problem. All right? 
and then once it becomes a multiplication problem then you do the same thing that we did back in um, section 6.1 uh, when we learn how to multiply, we have to factor everything, uh, at least uh, everything that's more than one term. See how these two right here, these two right here are just single terms. So those are single green ones there. All right. Uh, these are more than one term right here, that this top one and this bottom one. But aren't they both prime? Okay. They both have a GCF of 1. And they both have two terms with a variable to the first power, x to the first here, and then x and y to the first up here. So that makes them prime. And so they're just single red ones. Okay. Remember the rules here with red and green. We start out with the green. You're allowed to cancel green ones, one on top, one on the bottom, even if they're not exactly the same, because the rules on green do not require that they're exactly the same. You just got to have one green one on top and one green one on the bottom. And then if something cancels, you can do it. So x squared and x squared becomes 1 over 1, as we learned back in 6.1 in previous discussions as well. y squared and y to the third, we get... 3 minus 2 gives me y to the first on top because the bigger exponent's on top. I put that there. And then I put the one where the smaller exponent was. <laughs> Excuse me. Let me clean up my mess here. I'll put it up here. I got 3x plus 2y over 1. Uh, and then I've got y over y squared plus 2x. What is all this equal to here? Okay. Coming back down. Remember what we talked about again, when you have, when you're actually multiplying the numerators and denominators together, um, if you've got a numerator denominator with more than one term in it, and you're actually multiplying it by something other than one, other than positive one, you got to put that thing in brackets. And so I got to put the 3x plus 2y because it's got two terms in it, in brackets. All right. Um, down here, when you multiply something with more than one term in it, by just positive 1, then you don't need the brackets. You just say this, right? You just say that 1 times that uh, multiple term uh, denominator is just equal to the inside. It's just equal to that denominator, okay? So again, you can leave your answer like this with uh, brackets if you want. Uh, you don't have to distribute it out. My main concern when you multiply is that you've canceled everything you can, but you can distribute that out if you like in your final answer. Again, it's not mandatory, your choice. All right, but just multiply these together in the same normal way that uh, we did back in 6.1. All right, um, so that is problem A. Let's do that again here in problem B. Notice that this time in problem B that uh, the bottom here, if you just say 6 over 1, which is the same thing as 6, all right, um, that is a single fraction, and they want the top and bottom to be a single fraction. So that's already done. All you got to do then is do the same thing on the top part. You got to go 1 over x plus 6 minus 1 over x. All right. Um, now remember, when you have more than one term in any of your denominators, the way you figure out the LCD is you have to factor uh, your denominators, but you also got to identify your factors. This thing is prime, and so I can't factor it, but that does mean that it's a single red one because it's got more than one term. It's going to be red. And when you do have a single uh, term as one of your denominators, that's a green one. All right. I didn't do that stuff up here, the factoring stuff with the red and green, because uh, when all of your denominators are just single terms, as we saw here, uh, you could just do the, uh, the separate uh, thing we talked about in 6.2 when you figure out the LCD of single terms. But when any of them are more than one term, you got to do the separate uh, method that we saw in 6.2 for when you have more than one term in any of your denominators. Now, just to uh, let you know right now, uh, when you have a red one and a green one, the uh, and you have one of each, the LCD is just simply going to be both of those things, not merged to get, not uh, like merged together. It, so the X is just one X there. No, no, no. It is. Um, you got to have both the red and the green in there separately, but they are getting multiplied together like this. All right. Um, 
So again, when you have just a green and a red, it is consistent with our rules that we saw in 6.2 that they would both go into the answer. Make sure that the uh, uh, red one has a bracket around it because it's got more than one term and we're multiplying it by the X. Okay. Um, so with that in mind, we can once again see that we have a situation where you've got two factors in your LCD, but one of them is already in your current denominator. And so it would make logical sense to just simply multiply by the, the other factor. So x plus 6 times x gives me both of these. All right. So on the top, that would be x. Um, and then um, down here, then, I'd have to multiply by x plus 6, wouldn't I? X is already there. We need both of them in the uh, LCD. And so I multiply by the other one, put it in brackets because it's got more than one term and we're multiplying it. Now remember, when you subtract fractions, you guys, you got to remember, don't distribute the negative along with the 1. Just distribute the 1. Then the negative, the minus sign means that we change signs of that answer. So distributing the 1 gives me x plus 6, but then when I change the signs, I get negative x, and I only change the signs because why? Because it's a subtraction problem. If it was addition, like in the first problem, then you don't change the signs, and that's why I didn't do it there. Um, and you get that right there. Okay, so... Remember, after you change the signs of that answer, when you distribute the 1, you then combine like terms, okay, after you've changed the signs. If I change my, or excuse me, if I combine my like terms now, the x and the negative x cancel in the numerators there, okay, and you just end up with negative 6. And then, of course, the denominator stays the same. And so there you go. All right. Um, Moving that back over here, just transferring that back over here, uh, the top now looks like this, negative 6 over x bracket x plus 6. And then the bottom is 6 over 1. So just like in the last problem, after you get a single fraction on both the top and the bottom, then what do we do? We then take the uh, first fraction, keep it the same, but then we flip the second fraction, don't we? Because you're dividing fractions, so you got to flip the second one. It becomes 1 over 6, but then we, it simultaneously becomes a multiplication problem. All right, when you do that flip. Multiplication means that I have to identify my factors and also factor but nothing factors here because we just got three three of these are just single terms so they're just you never have to factor a single term uh but um how about this right here well this thing is already factored for us because when you have a term times a bracket as long as a bracket is prime which it is all right we already established that earlier uh that's already been factored for us as well so I factored, or at least I tried to, and then I identified my factors after I tried to factor. Now I'm ready to cancel. There's only one thing that cancels here, though, right? Uh, this negative 6 and this 6, because they're both green, you're allowed to cancel them, and we get negative 1 over 1. Okay, nothing else cancels, does it? So we get this here, negative 1 over 1, I'm sorry, negative 1 over x, x plus 6. Just cleaning up my mess without all the slash marks in there for the canceling. Uh, multiply by 1 over 1. And that leads to what here? That leads to, um, if I multiply those together, I get negative 1 over and then x, x plus 6. Because when you multiply x, x plus 6 times 1, it's just still going to stay the same thing when you multiply by 1. Okay. And there you go. Now remember, uh, you might be wondering, oh, I thought that when we multiply the x plus uh, a bracket times 1, we can get rid of the bracket. Now, but that's not the only thing that's getting multiplied by here. It's also getting multiplied by x. If a bracket is getting multiplied only by 1, then yeah, you could get rid of the brackets. But not if it's being multiplied by something else, and it's also being multiplied by x right there. So I just wanted to clear that up. Okay, so that's problem B. Okay.
Okay, so now that as we proceed on to problem C, uh, more of the same, okay, this problem's a little bit more involved as far as uh, finding the LCD and stuff, but mostly the same process, so let's take a look at it. Uh, so again, we need to uh, make the uh, numerator and denominator into a single fraction. That means that we need to add the fractions together in both the top and the bottom. So let's take a look. Uh, in uh, problem C, on the numerator, we got 2 over x plus 3, and then we got 5x over, and I'm going to go ahead and factor that right now, x squared minus 9, because I know I need to do that whenever I have more than one term in my denominators uh, in order to find the LCD. And that ends up being this right here. So the first denominator, I didn't factor that because that was prime. This one breaks up into two red ones. And so as we learned in the uh, discussion with LCD in the last section, uh, when you got uh, just red ones only, then you just simply take all of the different red ones and put it into your LCD uh, unless uh, there was that one exception, uh, if the same one appears more than once in the same denominator, all that stuff. But uh, that does not happen here. Um, and so our LCD just simply ends up being the two different ones that you see there, x minus 3 and x plus 3. Uh, and so let me set that up here. So the, I need both of my denominators to look like that. The second one already looks like that. It already is that denominator that we want it to be. And so we just simply uh, keep the numerator the same as well, 5x. If the bottom stays the same, so will the top. However, on the other one, we have what? We have two red ones in the LCD. Uh, one of those two red ones is already sitting in the denominator currently, and so we need to multiply that by the other one then, x minus 3, in order to get it equal to this. All right. Um, and so that means I multiply the top by x minus 3 as well. And so there you go. What do we get? Well, remember, we have to distribute out that uh, bracket right there, uh, just like we learned in the last section, so that we can uh, combine like terms on the next step. I get 2x minus 6. And now that the denominators are the same, I add the numerators together. That means to combine like terms. No, no sign changing this time, because we're not subtracting the numerators, we're adding them. And so we get this right here. So that is the top of the big fraction over here. Let's do the same thing on the bottom. 4 over x plus 3 is being added to 2 over x minus 3. Like that. And again, what is the LCD going to be here? Well, since both of these are, let me zoom in there. I probably should have written that a little bit bigger, but uh, zooming in will help. Uh, both of these are prime. And so since we need to put the, all of the different ones into the LCD when you're talking about the red factors, uh, I'm going to put those two, both of those in there, x minus 3 and x plus 3, like this. There we go. And now... Um, what does that give me here? Uh, again, we have two red ones in the LCD. One out of the two uh, red ones in the LCD is already sitting in our denominator already. So we, again, just have to multiply by the other one. Uh, in this case, it's x minus 3. So that would give me what on the top there? It would give me distributing out that bracket because I can't have brackets on the next step when I combine when I uh, add my numerators together I get 4x minus 12 down here the missing factor there's x plus 3 in order to get it equal to the LCD right here and so I need to multiply the top by that and I get 2x plus 6 all right, now the denominators are the same. I can now combine like terms in the numerator since I'm adding them together. And I get 6x minus 6, combining the like terms in the numerator. The denominator stays the same. There we go. So that concludes the denominator right there. Um, 
And so now that we have the numerator and the denominator uh, figured out what they're equal to, I get what here? Uh, the top is now 7x minus 6 over x minus 3x plus 3. The bottom is 6x minus 6 over x minus 3x plus 3. And now, um, as you guys know from the previous two problems, when you have a fraction divided by a fraction, which we don't have until we get to this step, but we have it now, a fraction divided by a fraction means that you multiply by the reciprocal of the bottom fraction right there, keeping the first fraction the same. Okay. Now, when I do that, um, it's now a multiplication problem, and that means that I need to factor everything. Um, that's a prime polynomial, so that's a single red one right there. Okay. The uh, x minus 3, x plus 3, those things are two red ones right there. Okay. Um, if you do your LCD, and that's what they that's where they came from. Those those two brackets were, were both the LCD from these two things we saw over here on the right. Okay, and when your LCD is done in a normal manner, it's already going to be factored if you just keep it in that normal way that we write it. Uh, so just letting you know that so that uh, you don't need to try to, you know, factor that again. It's already been factored. And then this last thing here, instead of writing the whole problem over again, I'm just going to factor that now by erasing this and replacing it. 6x minus 6 is 6 bracket x minus 1. That gives me a green one and a red one. And now that everything has been factored, I'm ready to start canceling. 6 cannot cancel with anything because you can't cancel a green on the bottom unless there's a green on the top somewhere that it will cancel with. So leave that 6 right there alone. But I can cancel the x minus 3 and the x minus 3. I can cancel the x plus 3 and the x plus 3. All right, and that gives me this right here. Just like that. And then um, multiplying that together now, I get, as you guys know, uh, when you get uh, 1 times something, it's just equal to itself. So 7x minus 6 over 6 bracket x minus 1. And that's the final answer right there. Okay. So that's the three problems on the front here. I'm going to ask you to try some problems on the back. Uh, a couple notes, though, before we try those. Um, let me flip that over. First of all, we're going to go ahead and skip number four. You don't need to worry about that one. Doing one through three will be enough. Um, so let's go up to one, two, and three. Uh, number two in particular, I want to look at that. That obviously looks very different from the problems we've looked at so far. Uh, but uh, just a reminder here, uh, back in uh, chapter one, we talked about negative exponents uh, and how that relates to... Uh, Fractions, okay, and sure enough We got fractions here uh, normally, so let's see how that all works out. We know that um, A a to the negative power is the same thing as 1 over a to the positive power Okay, so in other words a to the negative 1 is going to be the same thing as what? It's going to be the same thing as 1 over a to the first. All right. Uh, b to the negative 1 is 1 over b to the first and so on. All right. So a to the negative 2 would be 1 over a squared. b to the negative 2 would be 1 over uh, uh, b to the second. So if I take 5 times 1 over a... Okay, because that's what this says. It says 5 times a to the negative 1. That would be 5 over 1 times 1 over a to the first. 
And what is that going to be? That's going to be um, 5 over A. And you'll see that this starts to look like a complex fraction, even though it doesn't yet. And then we have negative 2 times, actually minus 2. Let's just say minus 2 right there. Minus 2 over 1 times 1 over B. Um, and 2 over 1 times 1 over B is going to be minus 2 over, excuse me, minus 2 over B. All right, same type of thing happens on the bottom of the fraction here where you have, let's go through it carefully here. We've got uh, 25 uh, times 1 over A squared. That's going to be 25 over A squared. And finally, minus 4 uh, times 1 over B squared. 4 times 1 over B squared is going to be 4 over B squared. Okay. One other thing I want to note here, you guys, uh, when you figure out the LCD, for example, of say A and B, remember you got to take the largest exponent. So if you've got A to the first and no A at all, remember the largest exponent is what you're looking for. So A to the first and no A at all, that's going to be A to the first that goes into your LCD. All right. Um, same thing with B. B to the first, no B at all. What's the largest exponent for B right here? I'm just looking at the top two fractions right here, not down here yet. B to the first and no B at all. That would be um, B to the first. So your LCD up here would be AB. Okay. And the one down here is similar. It's going to end up being A squared, B squared for a similar reason. Okay. Now, uh, I'd like you to go ahead and try 1, 2, and 3 right now. Okay, keeping this information in mind in number two. But try one, two, and three, and then hit the play button when you're ready. All right, in problem number one right here, we have, uh, um, once again, we need to make the top and the bottom into a single fraction by subtracting the fractions in both the top and the bottom. Let's take a look at uh, the first, uh, the top part there first. Okay, uh, if I subtract those, I get uh, uh, a denominator of uh, xy. Again, you have x to the first, no x at all. So the LCD is going to have to have x to the first in it, the largest exponent of x. Uh, same thing here with y. y to the first on the bottom, no y at all up here. So y to the first has to go into the LCD. We multiply by the appropriate things right here in order to make the denominators the same. And then remember, we have to subtract right now. Now, I want to clear something up right here in case anybody's wondering. Uh, I know we said that uh, um, when you subtract, you're supposed to change the signs of the uh, term that you're or the terms that you're subtracting. However, this time you only have one term in the denominator or in the numerator rather that you're subtracting. When that happens, you guys, uh, as you can see, this is currently just 2x. Uh, when you just say minus 2x, it's going to change the sign to negative 2x there, isn't it? So if it's a positive, if it's just a single positive term that you're subtracting, you just need to say minus 2x. You don't need to uh, change the sign and then combine like terms, although that would, uh, if you do it correctly, come out the same way. But if it's just a single positive term, which you sometimes get, just say minus 2x, and it, it, it comes out correct. It ends up changing that sign anyway. So I just wanted to clear that up. That whole thing about sign changing is mainly for when the numerator you're subtracting has more than one term in it. Okay, And you've got to make sure that all the signs change in that numerator. <clears throat> so... Remember, though, they're not combined like terms, <clears throat> okay? When you add and subtract fractions, or sorry, when you add and subtract terms, 3y minus 2x, don't combine them unless they are like terms. So <clears throat> we end up getting 3y minus 2x with the denominator staying the same. <clears throat> Excuse me. So then, um, same thing on the denominator of the big fraction. The LCD, once again, is going to be xy for a similar reason. Multiply by x right here to make the denominator the same. Okay, x, y for both now. And so now we have 4x and 7 as my numerators. Since I'm supposed to subtract them according to the original problem when it told us to do that, I get 4x minus 7, which is equal to 4x minus 7 because you're not allowed to combine terms that aren't like terms when you're subtracting. Okay, and so the denominator is now this. 
Let's move the brand new numerator and the brand new denominator, these two things right here. Let's move those over and we get this right here. That then leads to what? That then leads to having to flip over the uh, second fraction. Okay, I know this looks kind of blue right here, but those are green factors right there. Uh, we have a couple of prime uh, polynomials there, so those are single red ones right there. And since these are both green, uh, then we uh, cancel the X's and cancel the Y's like we normally would if they're both green. And we end up with this right here. Okay, final answer, as you can see there. Let's try that again here in number two. <clears throat> In number two, as I mentioned, uh, we have uh, this situation right here, which I already wrote down. Okay, uh, how do we get to this point right here? Well, we got to find that out by, uh, first of all, uh, taking the numerator and denominator and making it into a single fraction once again. Doing that on the numerator, I get this right here. AB is the denominator, the common denominator. And then... Uh, Multiplying by the appropriate things, I get 5b and 2a. Subtracting those, since those are not like terms, 5b minus 2a is 5b minus 2a. Don't combine. Not like terms there. Not like terms. Uh, the other, uh, the denominator here that I need to combine into one fraction, the uh, LCD is a squared b squared. And so uh, I multiply by the appropriate things there once again. Uh, and I get 25b squared and 4a squared on the top. Once again, when you subtract those things though, you can't combine them because they're not like terms. Denominator as usual stays the same. So then I move those two fractions over uh, and I get these two fractions right here. Since uh, I have a fraction divided by a fraction, I need to what? I need to flip the second fraction over. All right, and then I, since it's now a multiplication problem, I have to factor everything. This thing right here is not factored yet, so let me do that. Uh, I get this right here, 5b minus 2a, 5b plus 2a. Uh, I know it's kind of hard to see that minus right there, okay, where I slashed it out, but 5b minus 2a is right here. So I can then cancel the two red ones. I can also do some canceling with the uh, the a, b, a squared, b squared, as you can see there. Uh, let me zoom in there a little bit more. You can see that. Okay, and doing all that canceling and cleaning things up here, I get this right here, which then leads to this final answer, number number two. Okay, and finally, let's take a look at number three. <clears throat> number three, you can see that the bottom of that fraction is already a single fraction, so at least for the moment, leave that alone. But the top we need to take care of, all right, we need the top to be what? We need the top to be a single fraction, all right? So um, these are both prime uh, uh, polynomials down here, so they're both red ones. We gotta put both of the red ones into the LCD. Multiply by the appropriate things here. In other words, multiply by the factor that's missing in the current denominator in order to get it equal to the LCD. And then when I distribute this out, again, do not distribute the minus along with the 3. Just distribute the 3. That gives me 3x plus 3. But the reason why I change the signs of 3x and 3 is because that's what you do when you're subtracting numerators and the numerator you're subtracting has more than one term in it, unlike the previous problems we just looked at. It has more than one term in it, so i got to make sure I change the sign of each one of those okay, before I combine like terms. Again, that's what you do when you subtract. Okay. Uh, combining like terms, the x terms cancel out, but the negative 3 and the negative 3 become negative 6. And so I take this fraction right here and I move it over, okay, so that it's right here. And so the top becomes this. Now that I have a fraction divided by a fraction, I do the reciprocal thing. There it is right there. And now I need to factor if anything needs to be factored. Well, as it turns out, this thing needs to be factored. Okay, this thing down here already was factored, and then the other two things were just single terms. You don't need to factor those. X squared minus 1 is equal to X minus 1, X plus 1. 
that then allows us to cancel a couple of red ones there. Uh, a couple pairs of them anyway, okay? And so cleaning up that mess, we end up with a very simple answer here of negative 6 over 5. And so this big, huge, complex fraction turned out to be this little tiny fraction as an answer, okay? But it's equivalent, all right? And that's why we simplify things in math. A lot of times it uh, makes things a lot simpler than they originally were. Okay, so this concludes section uh, 6.3. Again, don't worry about number 4. Uh, okay, if you have any questions about complex fractions, don't hesitate to contact me. Take care.